proud to say I've worked alongside this ray of sunshine for the Youth Festival this year. She's undergone an impressive career journey, embracing her love for art, technology, and the digital world to make a difference in her community. Evolving from a young mother, she achieved milestones in educational support and childcare services when she transitioned her childcare centre into a paperless organisation. As a community development officer for the City of Palmerston, she has pioneered tech-driven youth experiences and events like the Palmerston Youth Festival that I just mentioned and Geek Fest Top End. She is a renowned urban artist who goes by the tag of Miss Snaps and has just returned from Canberra where she attended Artlands 23 to help shape the next creative vision for regional arts in Australia. Bringing the arts in steam, please welcome to the stage the amazing Amanda Stevenson. Hi everybody, it doesn't matter how many times you do this, you still feel really nervous. And I heard that the last speaker was a bit nervous, so bear with me. Um, my name's Amanda Stevenson. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I'm speaking on today, the Larrakia, and to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Um, I'm very excited to bring the A into STEAM. Um, recently, like Amanda said, um, I was at Artlands and I listened to a young engineer there who put up some diagrams about the way that her brain um, creates things and it's exactly how my brain worked. So I thought it was really interesting and um, I guess makes me feel proud that I am now a part of this um, as well. So this is me, um, I work for council, I am a big dog person and I love spray paint. Um, one of the first conferences I ever went to, I got to li listen to Maggie Dent talk, who um, my background before now is childcare and one of the first things she did was put up her first up four sons that she was really, really proud because she brought them into this world. So like me, I have four very amazing daughters. Um, probably my biggest inspiration for everything that I've done to this day. And I'm also a really proud Lola now. So my beautiful grandbaby, um, Sunny, uh, has just brought so much joy into our lives. Um, sorry, I'm so nervous and I'm not sure why because I've heard you're all amazing. <laughs> cool. um, a little bit more about me. Uh, I've been in childcare. Um, I'm a street artist, a photographer, I love digital art, um, I've become a community development officer and probably one of my biggest pro uh, projects in that time has been the Palmerston Youth Festival. Whew. It's only slide number two. <laughs> um, I guess my introduction um, really falling in love with art was as a photographer. Um, I really loved being able to capture images and because I have a really bad memory, most of my family call me Annie Dory, um, I like to be able to capture images so that I can remember the things that I've done, but also I can share things with people the way that I see them. Um, and at the time, probably about 2015, I'm supporting her. <laughs> um, in 2015, I went to Melbourne. Um, and discovered street art. I was taken to Hoysia Lane and I saw all the amazing murals and was just like, wow. Um, I started looking into graffiti and I was kind of curious about the culture, um, you know, sort of that demographic that wanted to get their voice out and be known and be seen and be heard. Um, from there, I decided to come back to Darwin and start documenting what street art I could find here in lots of strange places and drainways and all sorts of things. And um, through that process, met my partner, Rhys. Uh, he's a graffiti artist from London who as a youth, he got into a bit of trouble painting on trains, um, paid his dues, but has now used that lived experience and that skill to, I guess, build his own business here locally, working with disengaged youth, which is really amazing. Um, he taught me to paint and the minute he put a can in my hand, um, I didn't really pick up my camera <laughs> anymore because I kind of felt like a fraud because I was taking these amazing pictures of people's art which people give me heaps of kudos for but all I did was press a button. So it was kind of nice to be the person who was putting the art on the wall. Um, 
And it also felt really powerful to be able to paint these really big things. And my partner's like this tall and he taught me to paint big. So I'll share a little bit of that with you as well. Um, so this is when I first met him, uh, I was a photographer and I convinced him to spend some time with me because I wanted to do a time lapse. If you ever have the time, look up Selena Miles time lapse. Uh, sorry, Limitless is the time lapse that she created. And it was of this street artist or graffiti artist who basically took over a warehouse and she time lapsed the whole thing. So I was like, I want to do this. So I connected with Reese, did my first time lapse, painted my first piece. He gave me the tag snaps because I take pictures. Um, and then I started passing that on to my daughter, who picked it up a lot quicker than I did. Um, in that time, I'd just come back from New Zealand and was sort of living in an art share house and trying to discover who I was because I'd had my kids really young and my mum was like, you need to go get a real job. So she sent me an um, advertisement for the Palmerston Library as a programs officer and given that my background was childcare, I kind of slotted straight into that. It was really funny, um, one of the best managers I've ever had, Anna Ingram, shout out to her. Um, I couldn't read a storybook to save my life. Three times I tried to read this pug story, but she saw something in me and she hired me anyway. So for the first year, I was a programs officer in the library, which, you know, that introduced me to a lot of different tech programs. Um, I then moved into the uh, library engagement officer the following year and looked after the programs team and then really excited to the following year um, apply for the community development officer role. Um, before doing that though, while I was in the library, um, I was very fortunate. Um, my partner got an invitation to be a part of an official paint jam run by Iron Lack in Townsville. So I got to be a plus one, which I didn't actually get invited. But this was sort of um, a mind blowing moment for me because when I arrived there, we got minibus like most dodgy artists do, you know, you grab a minibus and you travel down and backpack your way down and we get there and there is this massive wall, it's completely blanked out and there are all these artists everywhere but every single one of them is a guy and I turn out to be the only girl at this paint jam. There was supposed to be one other girl but she didn't rock up so this is my piece right here, smack bang in the middle of the wall and I painted really big and I just remember, I guess, that being my first real art collective experience where I got to be surrounded by people that were like me, that were wanting to do the things like me. There was music happening, there was atmosphere, there was culture, there was connection. It was just really in inspiring and I guess really got me connected to that graffiti and street art world. Um, from there, um, there was the opportunity of the Darwin Street Art Festival, which David Collins run. It was such an exciting opportunity and I was lucky to be selected. Unfortunately, um, the painter that I was meant to paint with, her grandfather passed away. So I didn't end up painting that year, but me being me, when something sad happens in my life, I just create a project to distract myself because you can't wallow in sadness for too long, right? Otherwise you get stuck there. So um, here again, tapping into that um, technology, we're here in the NT in Darwin. There's not a lot of um, major female street artists here, so I had a lot of lack of connection. Um, so instead, I reached out to all the women online that inspired me on Instagram, and I said, hey, do you guys want to paint with me? So for International Women's Day, I was able to get paint sponsorship for all these people around the world, but I wasn't able to send them the paint because it's, I didn't realise, um, quite a toxic, um, flammable thing, and it's very expensive to send all around the world. So. I then reach back out to all these women and say, hey, I know I promised you paint, but I can't give you paint anymore. But if you still want to paint for a good cause, I'm going to paint. So um, a whole bunch of women painted with me. And then that led on to another project I'll tell you about in a second for the International Women's Day website. Um, all these murals here were the women who decided to paint with me that year. Um, I'm just going to take a second to drink water because I'm getting shaky again, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yes, I had people from New Zealand, in America, in London, in down in the bottom of Australia, and also in Mexico, Mexico, join in and paint. And then after this experience, I reached out to all the women who participated and said, hey, would anyone be interested in forming an international women's crew? Because 
there's a bit of a stigma around women painting, whether it's in the graph scene or in the street art world, and I'd really like to change that because what I'm learning from my partner's experience and to where I am now is you could be a graffiti artist, which I'm about going against the system sometimes too, um, to be heard, of course, uh, and get fined $3,000, or you could turn that art into a skill and earn $3,000. You could still put your messaging up in a more creative way that is more acceptable to the community. But there was this transferable skill that could actually make you a decent amount of money. Um, so I reached out to these girls and was like, hey, is anyone keen in setting up a crew? And these amazing women all said yes. So Samu is from Portugal, Ador is from Canada, Miss Yellow is from Mexico as well as Miss Baby, and um, Jem Bowles is from New Zealand. My daughter, Miss Beats, is also a part of the crew, and I had another member, Nish, but unfortunately she passed away before we painted, so she wasn't able to join us. Um, this here is a picture of the wall that we all painted together. So I was really fortunate in order to bring them all over to Australia, and in 2019, we all painted at the first Pumps and Youth Festival that happened. We got to put on this major street party. We took over the big car park out the back of the wreck and we had Young Miller and, um, oh my goodness, my mind's gone blank, many other really great artists performing. We had breakdancing crews and we had the International Women's Crew painting live along that wall. So that was pretty epic um, as a first project to then bring people physically together to work and do that in my home space. Thank you, thank you. Um, that then got the attention of the International Women's website um, and they reached out and um, I think it was 2018, they um, decided to create these creative missions. So they wanted to support women to be uh, more visual in the art space as well as many other spaces but obviously I was representing street art. So for the next few years um, I created the artwork for the website and I also got to paint their hero sort of mural for the year, which was really, really lovely. Um, these are the murals that I painted locally. Sorry, they're not all clear. Um, but these are all with different artists. Mim, Mim's niece, Michaela, who's just painted recently in the Darwin Festival, my daughter Bella, and Polly um, Johnston painted the one at the top. And fun fact, if you were to watch um, Rebel Wilson's senior year movie, they actually took me and Polly's mural from that year and have edited it and put it into the school, one of the school walls in the background as a mural. So I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, and, and I guess that led me to being a community de development officer for City of Palmerston. Um, that really opened up so many doors for me and for my career, especially having a creative mind because I guess as local government, you already kind of get doors opened for you as it is. But if you can come with a creative brain, with new ideas, with the ability to collaborate and work with people to create new things, it's a pretty exciting space and a very well resourced space to work. Um, I want to do a shout out for these two ladies here, Sophie and Laura. They helped me pull off the youth festival this year. Um, I'm not sure if you realise, but it's actually quite a small team that pulls that project and it's a seven day festival, so it's really, really big. And I think possibly other than Christmas, the biggest thing um, event wise that we do at council. Um, some of the other big creative events and projects that I've worked on through council, like I said, was a Pumps and Youth Festival. Um, Urban Jams is another one that ran for two years where we got all different stakeholders from different interest areas to collaborate and create a space for young people to come. We take over the rec center and there's basically something for everyone to engage in. And it was just so successful because having strong partners to collaborate with meant that I actually didn't have to do anything for this event. I would open up the space, I would advertise it, I put the signage out and everyone would come and run this amazing space that was just for the young people where they could express themselves, where they could be surrounded by good mentors or connect up with services and support. So that's another one that I'm very proud of. Um, and then through the youth festival, um, one of the major days is Geek Fest Top End. And I remember when I first started working in the library 
Um, I worked with a colleague named Miss Nadine, who was an advocate for all things geek. And back then, I was pure street art, big fishing person, but that was me. I didn't like computer games and wasn't really into any of that and was quite resistant, actually. <laughs> but then when I moved into my role and NTG gifted us this amazing um, amount of funds to run the youth festival, um, by the second year, I was coordinating Geek Fest, and when I brought the stakeholders of all the different elements that make up geek culture together, um, I just learned what an interesting group of people they were. And in actual fact, we're all geeks, and we've all been assimilated, we didn't even realize, because we're all using technology, whether we like it or not, you know? It's in our everyday lives. And the more I got to work with this crew, the more I was just like, Actually, you're my favorite crew to work with. They were so knowledgeable about so many things, and it didn't matter how many times I put my foot in my mouth in regards to trying to relay the messaging that they'd just given me. They were always so kind and accepting, which I think is everybody in the whole STEAM space, right? We're all here to help make the place better. Um, so yes, GeekFest Top End is huge. Can I just check how much longer I've got? Uh, okay, 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 sorry, just checking out, because I can talk a lot, so make sure you wave at me when you've had enough. Um, GeekFest Top End, like I said, was probably one of the biggest events. So for the Youth Festival, there are seven days. We have an opening event and a closing, one being a cons community concert, and then GeekFest Top End being the other big day. They are huge, but GeekFest just has so many elements, it's an absolute beast. What I think is amazing about GeekFest is in 2000, was it 2020, we had to postpone um, the youth festival that year due to COVID first coming to the territory. And um, at that time, I was given the opportunity to flip all of my youth programs to become digital programs. Um, it actually was achievable and it worked. I didn't get huge numbers in all of those programs, but there were young people coming in and connecting. Um, and at that time, instead of running GeekFest, I put on a workshop for the local game esports organizations so that they could learn more about licensing and how to run more professional tournaments and also just making sure that they're doing things the right way so that they never get into strife. And in that year, um, Ness put in some feedback around this idea of creating a peak body for geek culture and all the stakeholders that come in that space. And, did not appreciate having to write evaluations until this time. But what I learned from writing that evaluation is so many seeds can come from that. And so from that idea, I met up with Ness and was like, hey, I can't form you a peak body, but what we could do is, I now have to run this geek event that I know nothing about. So maybe we could form a working group, and if we work together for long enough, and you build trust and we build that security, people will be interested in forming this peak body. 12 months later, they set up the Geek Culture Collective and are now incorporated and running Tropicon in Darwin. It's super exciting for me to see that happen as a CDO because our job is to build our community up and then let them go and do amazing things because then I can do new things because they're doing the things I was doing. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about more about this group because one of the other projects that came out from this was um, Dylan Bellant, Dylan Bennett, who some of you may have heard of, does amazing things in innovation, entrepreneurship, and video game development. And when he came to Darwin a few years back, he reached out to me and was telling me all about his ideas and about how there were gonna be cap tux, uh, tax cuts coming to Australia for game developers. So I was like, what a cool opportunity. Lucky my CEO likes to be the first of people to do things, so I reached out to council and said, there's this great opportunity coming for our community. Do you think that we could invest some um, programming into video game development? So I reached out to Dylan. Dylan put on a program for my youth, because I'm youth portfolio, so I always start things in the youth space. Um, he taught these young people in six weeks how to build a video game. I think six may have been built that year. It's a little bit of a blur. Um, but from that experience, um, when Michael Gunner came around, he s invested a lot of time talking to those young people about what they'd created, how quickly they'd created it. Um, then following Geek Fest, 
we worked with Dylan, who then trained up these young people, who then produced the next round of game development that we held in Palmerston, which was like a week long of learning all the different opportunities to the careers that um, come from building a game. You know, there are so many roles from the storyteller to the coder to the graphic designer, all sorts of things. Um, so I think through working with all of these different people that are all coming from this STEM background, just one thing after the other led to a new idea and a new program and a new opportunity. Um, and I guess I was just really lucky being in local government that I was able to support so much of that. Um, so many times I've thought to myself, oh, it takes so long to do things, or there's so much red tape, or there's so much politics working in local government. But the one thing that it really has given me is stability and career opportunity and a lot of resources to make impact on my community. So I think that makes it worth it. <laughs> um, so I guess um, I don't know who wrote this, but it really stands out to me. You don't know what you're capable of until you put yourself in a position to do something you've never done before. And that is definitely something council has done for me. Um, as a community development officer, you don't know, one day I'm building a pop-up park, the next day I'm running a youth festival, and these are all things that I've never done in my life. So, you know, I've learnt in the time, in three years, I've learnt to become a festival producer, I've learnt to create communities, I've supported people to build geek, um, associations that can now empower so many people in our community. So, um, yeah, it's, it's such an awesome place to work. And if you have the opportunity to be a part of local government, I highly encourage you to give it a go. Um, and then the last thing for me is, I guess, creativity wise. Um, I'm really excited. I've just put a grant into Creative Australia, chucking the juju out there. Um, I, I would like to. Um, create a collaborative project using virtual reality with the International Women's Crew. So although we can't all be together, um, there is possibility, we've learned through COVID, to do many things virtually. So I'm really hoping to get some funds to continue working with all these amazing women who do the most amazing projects all around the world, empowering women in art. Um, to be able to collaborate more, because when they came to the territory, I was like, I found my people, and then they all had to go home. So. Um, apart from being a part of this community where I get to come and talk to people and meet people and work with so many people in the community, I do appreciate that opportunity all the time. But I am hoping that the universe um, sends some funds so that me and the girls can get back together and do more amazing work. Um, but yes. Let's give Amanda Stevenson a big round of applause. I'll just get you to stay there for one minute. We'll just throw, just have time for one question for Amanda right now. We have a young, brilliant mind with their hand up over here. Please tell me your name first, or introduce yourself, and then your question. Um, I'm Elizabeth. What advice would you give to a young female artist? Mm, I would say be brave. I think one of the hardest parts about being in a small community is that sometimes it feels like People have already connected and you may not be a part of the, any particular scene, but I think being brave and connecting up with local people, connecting up with other female artists and, and not being competitive, instead building each other up and working together on projects because it's actually crazy. You're super powerful as one woman, but when you put multiple women together, watch out world. Thank you so much, Amanda.